colours like those of a rainbow under the illumination of light. Isaac Newton, a 17th century British scientist, was the first to unfold the secret of colours. Droplets suspended in the atmosphere act like a prism. When sunlight enters a water droplet, it's refracted once. It's then reflected within the droplet and refracted once again when it emerges from the droplet. We can produce an artificial rainbow ourselves. Pour some water into a shallow plate to about one inch in depth. Place a mirror obliquely on one side of the plate. Then turn the plate until sunlight falls on the mirror. The light will first pass through the water and then be reflected by the mirror. The light ray emerging from the water will disperse into a colourful band. Let the light fall on a piece of white paper and you will see a rainbow. Now place a similar triangular prism after the first one. This second prism combines the colours again to produce white light, which then falls onto the paper. If we block some of the light rays going into the second prism, an unexpected colour will appear on the sheet of paper. For example, if we block the red light, 
a bluish green color will appear on the paper. This is because when one color is missing, the remaining colors can no longer combine to form white light. One by one, block the yellow, green and blue rays in the spectrum. Different bright colors will appear on the piece of paper. Newton discovered that white light is made up of different elements, but it can be formed by light rays of three colors. These three are the most important colors and are known as the three primary colors. With light rays of these three colors, we can form light of any other color. The three primary colors are red, green, and blue. Any other light color can be produced from light rays of the three primary colors with varying intensity. Mix the three colors, red, green and blue, and white light is formed again. Dots, each of which is as tiny as the point of a needle. We can't see them with the naked eye. As they're tiny and closely packed, we can't distinguish the light from each individual dot. We can only see the colors formed by the mixture of the three color lights. When electron beams hit the phosphor dots evenly, a white color is shown on the screen. If the electron beams hit only the red dots, but not the blue or green ones, the screen will only show the color red. By mixing these three colors in different ways, different colors will appear on the screen. When none of the phosphor dots is excited, the area is black. So if we watch black and white programs on a color TV, we're seeing a black color which results from the absence of light and a white color made up of red, green and blue light. An electron gun is used to produce light from the phosphor dots on the screen. There are three electron guns in the cathode ray tube, one for each color. Each gun will strike only the phosphor dots for the color to which it corresponds. The intensity of the beam regulates the amount of the light emitted from the corresponding phosphor beams controlled by two types of light-sensitive cells on the retina, the rods and the
These three colour elements can be found on the retina of a person of normal vision. However, if two elements are missing, all objects will appear to be grey in colour. This is the most serious type of colour vision impairment and is clinically known as total colour blindness. If one element is missing, the man cannot identify that particular colour. For example, if the red element is missing, an eye cannot identify the red colour. This is known as red colour blindness. If the green element is missing, we cannot identify the green colour. This is known as green colour blindness. Red light mixes with green light to give yellow light. But when red paint mixes with green paint, it gives not a yellow colour but dull dark purple. Why is this so? In fact, the mixture of coloured paints is completely different from the mixture of colour light. A sheet of paper is white in colour. When we put red paint on it, its optical properties are changed. When white light falls on it, the red paint reflects only the red light and absorbs the light of all other colours. So, the paper looks red in colour. This is the same for other paints, which reflect only light of the same colour as themselves. If an object reflects all light of different colours, the object appears white in colour. When red paint is mixed with green paint, the light reflected by the red paint is absorbed by the green paint, while the light reflected by the green paint is absorbed by the red paint. As a result, virtually no light is reflected, and the object looks dark purple in colour. paint colour is added, the light reflected doesn't increase, but in fact decreases. All objects show their true colour only under sunlight. For example, a red dress looks more colourful under sunlight than under fluorescent light. This is because the light from a fluorescent lamp is mainly made up of light from the blue end of the spectrum whereas sunlight is evenly distributed across the whole spectrum. Sufficient red light is thus reflected under the sun and the redness of the dress looks brighter. The surface of a white object reflects all light falling on it, so it is red when illuminated with red light. 
and blue when illuminated with blue light. Under sunlight, the egg white and egg yolk of a sunshine egg are clearly distinguished. However, in red and yellow light, the white and yolk of the egg are almost indistinguishable. This is because when illuminated with red and yellow light, the egg white only has red and yellow light to reflect and therefore looks the same color as the egg yolk. Sodium vapor lamps are often used for illumination along highways at night. These lamps give out a mainly yellow light. Under yellow light, yellow cars look very bright. As there's no blue or red light to reflect, blue or red cars appear to be dark grey. Red.